Hello, everyone. Welcome to the first part of the transition training, which is going to be a brief overview of St. Coletta's programming. Getting started, we're going to go over our definition of transition services, which according to the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act in 2004, is a coordinated set of activities provided by the school for a student with a disability that is designed to promote a successful transition from high school to post-secondary education or employment and independent living. For students at St. Coletta, this also could very well include a transition to a day program to support an employment, continued vocational training or residential care if that is appropriate for the student. An overview of the transition planning process includes a few separate very important pieces. One is the vocational assessment in which we develop appropriate measurable post-secondary goals that are based on age-appropriate vocational assessments related to post-secondary education and training, employment, and independent living skills. From there, we take that information and create goals that should reflect the strengths, preference, and interests of the student, along with input from their family. These services are always going to be strengths-based and focused on the student's abilities rather than their disability. An overview of the transition planning process starts at 12 and when they are 12 during their current IEP. The family, the school, and various agencies will all collaborate to develop an individualized plan for each student's specific needs. The purpose here is to provide students with knowledge, skills, guidance, and linkages to service and supports that might be needed to be successful after St. Coletta. Our role specifically falls into three separate categories of maintaining skill development, appropriate assessments for the students throughout their lifespan at St. Coletta, and maintaining a transition file all the way throughout their schooling as well. The transition file, which is updated yearly, includes a vocational assessment, and we have three separate assessments depending on their accessibility to that assessment, along with their goals for that school year. A report of that evaluation, whether it's formal or informal, an updated work history list of things that they've done at St. Coletta, and a current resume. We do this throughout our career-based training program. And we also teach our students functional life skills throughout our curriculum. Our functional life skills program includes functional literacy, where we might work on things such as recognizing community signs, shopping lists, using the internet or newspaper for research, completing job applications and resumes. We also use functional numeracy, where students can create a budget, pay bills, follow recipes, and even planning costs for travel and purchases. In there, we also use cognitive adaptive behavior for personal hygiene and grooming, laundry, appropriate work habits, and things such as matching, filing, and sorting for work skills. Our teacher's role is to encourage their student and their caregivers to participate in the entire planning process. To notify the Department on Disability Services, or DDS, or the local education agency, the LEA, of any IEP or transition meetings. Teachers ensure that all areas related to transition are addressed on the student's IEP by the age of 12. They will also administer appropriate vocational assessments, as long as they are appropriate for both age and functionality. They will also creatively implement goals and objectives into the student's daily program so that it fits most naturally. Along with that, the family and caregivers also have a role to play. 
They should be participating in planning IEP goals and objectives, participating in the IEP meetings, being an advocate for the student's needs and desires, to help complete applications in a timely manner, to work with some of the linking agencies such as DDS, SSI, Medicaid, or guardianship. If appropriate, to obtain guardianship of the student with a disability when they turn 18, to request assistance when needed, maintain contact with DDS case manager and provide updated contact info as appropriate, and again, to attend all meetings, scheduled assessments, and et cetera. Continuing on, we would like to become familiar with services that are available to adults in their jurisdiction, whether that's in the district, Maryland, or Virginia. It's a good idea to attend workshops and resource fairs that are offered about transition planning, to visit and interview those possible service providers a year before the transition. It's always a good idea to select your top three choices just in case the wait list might be a little bit longer than expected. It's also a good idea to select service providers as early as possible and then report those selections to the DDS case manager. Finally, leaving you with a few concluding thoughts. We know that this can be a very challenging and often frustrating process for everybody, but we believe that you can do this. It's vital to the success of your student after leaving St. Clara. We hope that we can get started as early as possible because the best way to alleviate the frustration and anxiety of transitioning is to stay involved in the process and start early. The goal of transition planning is to create opportunities for our students that will result in a positive outcome for their adult life. Thank you.